Hey guys, uh, it's Yuno, and I just wanted to do a little quick video here. Uh, it's going to be our next part in the Mastering series, and uh, it's probably going to be the shortest one because it's very simple, and um, it's pretty um, easy to grasp, but at the same time there's a lot of debate about it on the internet and whatnot, uh, and I'm here to put any kind of myths to rest about... Um, Dither. So uh, to begin with, what happens, say we have a 32-bit WAV file here. Uh, first of all, this is um, a remix by NitroFun. Uh, I mastered it for him. It's called Old School. And uh, he actually ended up winning the uh, remix competition for Monster Cat through, uh, with this track here. So congratulations to him. Um, it's a good... Uh, kind of a chiptune kind of house uh, complexro kind of thing, which is kind of cool. Um, but more importantly, let's get into the um, dither. If you want to check him out too, I'll leave his link uh, for his SoundCloud in the description. Um, so to begin with, we have a 32-bit WAV file here. Um, Wave files, which are lossless, uh, which we have said before, are the best type of file to use when you're doing any kind of production still, because they they don't throw out any data. Um, they're just the highest quality you could possibly use. Um, so we have ourselves here a 32-bit, um, 44.1 kilohertz wave file. Um, so it's 32 bits. We want it to end up being 16 bits in case anybody wants to put it on a CD because that's the CD format. 16, 44.1 kilohertz. Um, to do that, if we just simply rendered this 32-bit file here as 16 bits, what happens uh, towards the quieter end, uh, as soon as like it kind of tails off a little bit, um, there'll be little kind of, it almost sounds a little bit like aliasing, but it's known as quantization error, and it's where your um, computer can't process a certain uh, sound because it's too quiet uh, for the bit depth. And when you go from a higher bit depth to a lower bit, bit depth, and um, you have quieter sounds somewhere in the, the track, uh, you're going to lose it with uh, the quantization distortion and all that jazz right there. If you take a listen to quantization distortion, which we will in a couple of minutes here, um, you'll notice, as I said, it doesn't sound very good. Um, to prevent that, what we do is introduce dither, which is a low-level noise. And most people don't want to add any kind of extra noise to their signal. They want it to be as hi-fi as possible. But one way to think of it is this. When you do uh, render from 32 to 16 bits, uh, it's known as a truncation. It means that you're just throwing out bits, and it, that's what gives you that nasty uh, quantization error, which you can hear at, again, really low levels. Um, that stuff is pretty nasty, and if you replace it with just a little bit of kind of white noise sounding uh, noise, uh, it's not too bad of a sacrifice, um, at least and uh, to my ears and I'll show you in a little bit what I mean by that but enough talk uh, let me show you what dither sounds like so we got ozone 5 maximizer here is and uh, of course I'm amplifying this a little bit so you can hear it but this is the mbit plus dither and then here it is with different types of noise shapes I actually happen to really like um, the ultra noise shaping, which I'll show you in a little bit. It sounds like it's kind of obvious and that it sticks out, but when you have it in the context of a track, it actually works really well. And here, different types of dither. But all it really is is a certain noise, uh, low level noise. And what it does, anytime, say you're going from 16 to uh, 32 to 16 bits, Anytime you uh, exceed the 16 bits dynamic range, 
and it goes lower, um, you start to run into that nasty distortion. This low level noise keeps the noise, uh, there's a noise floor then at uh, the bottom of the 16 bit dynamic range. And um, that essentially prevents the signal from ever going below 16 bits, uh, the 16 bit range. Um, and that allows you to, um, in essence, prevent the distortion. Um, and for this track, I believe I used Mbit Plus. This isn't my mastering chain here. Um, this is right here. And there we go. Uh, yeah, I used Mbit Plus and I used a little bit of noise shaping, 16 bits and normal dither amount. So we don't have any quantization error there. So that's awesome. Um, now let's have a listen to what um, quantization error and dither sound like. So here is a test I have come up with and it's basically a sine wave at about 1000 hertz and it's uh, you can hear a little bit of quantization error going on in the first bit of this. And then this part right here is dither. And then this next part right here is going to be uh, ultra noise shaped dither. Alright, so that's kind of cool. Now, um, what is uh, what is the deal with noise shaping? What b noise shaping basically does is it uh, centers more of the dither frequencies towards the high end and in the context of um, music you can hear that it uh, isn't quite as noticeable as that full spectrum dither. Um, that's pretty much the uh, lesson in a nutshell. Um, I would say don't you don't want to dither on mix downs. You don't want to dither just within your mix. You really want to only dither at the very end of your mix. Um, otherwise you'll just keep pancaking more and more noise onto your uh, final product and uh, you don't really want to do that. And it really doesn't help too much to just keep dithering. Um, yeah, so for now that should do it as far as dither. If you have any questions, please leave a comment. Um, I'm going to leave a link to Nitro Fun's um, SoundCloud. I know I didn't really play the song too much. I didn't need to because um, it was just a dither uh, tutorial. But it's a really good song. Uh, he won. And um, I'm also going to leave a link in the description. It's going to be a download for this dither test and you can probably hear it a little bit better than through my microphone but you can certainly hear the quantization error in the first uh, part of this. It's a little bit quiet, um, but again, it sounds a bit like aliasing and it's not very good. So um, yeah, thanks for watching and uh, I'll try to keep you updated with some more tutorials.